February the 27th. Uh, lake level is about a normal winter pool, which is about 915, but we're about 915 and a half, so it's real close to normal. Uh, I did get to uh, go out fishing a few days the past week. And, you know, we've had several tournaments canceled just about every weekend. We either get high winds or uh, severe cold. So, you know, we haven't had any tournaments the last couple of weekends. We've got another one coming up this next weekend. But the water temperature that I've been finding is uh, about the coldest, about 42 degrees. And uh, I'm not finding much warmer than 43, 44. Uh, I haven't been up the upper river arms, up the James, but I hear that water up there is considerably warmer. I don't know whether it's because a lot of the water that's come in from the Springfield area, you know, when we've had some fairly warm rains. Uh, but mo for the most part, I've been down at the dam uh, between Baxter and Campbell Point and around Kimberling City some. And, you know, some days the bite's been really tough. We've, we've had a few days where we've managed to catch six or seven keepers. And we've had some days uh, fish four or five hours and not get a bite. Now, you know, there's not a lot of different things going on. What we caught fish, uh, the one day we had six or seven keepers. We caught uh, three or four on a jerk bait. I think three on a jerk bait, a couple on a grub or a little swim bait, and, and uh, one on an Alabama rig. Now, I understand up in the James, like I said, I have not been up there, but I've been hearing it's a pretty good crankbait bite, you know, where that water's been a little bit warmer. But I've been throwing it in the areas that I've been fishing in that 42, 43 degree water and have had very little su success on a crankbait. Now, I am catching some fish shallow. Uh, the jerkbait fish I'm catching, it's, it's really hard to put a solid deal together. The other day when we caught them, we caught one off a of bluff in, and that was probably the deepest fish we caught or over deeper water. Most all the other fish we caught, the boat was in no deeper than 20 foot. Uh, we caught a couple off of cedar trees, you know, suspended in the trees. Some of the swim bait we fish we caught were in six to 10 feet of water, you know, like say with the boat setting in about 10 feet. But the jerk baits I've been throwing, we, we caught them on a mixed stick, a uh, purple back, and we caught some on a, a mega bass, 110's got a kind of a blue and purple back. Now, like I say, there's no rhyme or reason. We just got to, we've had to cover a lot of water. Uh, I've been finding a lot of bait fish and the bait fish been pretty high up in the water column, like 10 to 15 foot in the center of a lot of the creeks, even some fish, uh, bait fish way in the backs of creeks. But I've struggled to get bites underneath or around the shad. I am seeing a few shad that are dying. And I think what's going to happen, uh, looks like it's going to be real cold again the first part of next week. And then we got a four or five day warming trend. And hopefully uh, that's the end of our winter. We'll see. We'll still have some colder days, but it'd be nice to get in the 50 degree days and have some sunshine. But I think when that happens, it seems like the worst shad kill is when the water temperature has reached the coldest temperature of the winter and starts to warm back up, that's when the shad seem to start dying. And normally if I get into an area where the shad are dying real bad, I usually leave. I don't mind a few shad dying, but I think when you get into them areas where every place you look and the gulls are going crazy, feeding on the, the shad that are dying, I think the bass uh, are as well. You know, they're just laying down there and they got a pretty easy meal. So I seem like I really struggle if I'm in an area of fishing where there's a lot of dying bait fish. But you know, some of the fish that we caught on the swim baits and a uh, little Ned rig, I'm just throwing a little, uh, like a Strike King Rage swimmer on a quarter ounce head or a Kitek, like a 2.8. Uh, this is a little uh, hand poured swim jig. I've got it on a five fish. Uh, ultimate Ned head, Ned jig head, and also a Critacraw on a Ned jig head. Now these fish here that we've caught have kind of almost been in like a, a spawning pocket, you know, flatter gravel pockets where the boat's setting in about 20 feet where you can cast into the bank. The problem is you'll fish 
or I would fish four or five of these pockets and get one bite. But they were usually smallmouth and they were, you know, decent fish, three, three and a half pounds. Even the fish that we caught on the jerk baits were all good quality fish. It was just hard to put together a pattern and get more than one bite, you know, in an area. Now I talked a couple weeks ago about trying to float and fly and we did that a little bit, but we had such high winds every day that we went out to fish. Seems like you gotta have pretty slack water to fish that float and fly. And that float and fly usually works real good about this time of the year when you're seeing <clears throat> just a few of the shad dying off, especially if they're them inch, inch and a half shad, <coughs> which is what we're seeing right now. Uh, <coughs> like I say, it was kind of hard to fish it when the wind was blowing 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, and even when you'd get out of the wind, the wind was, was still kind of whirling around and pushing that jig and, and cork down the bank where you couldn't get the bait down. But uh, hopefully, like I say, it's uh, we're at the time of year where the water's going to start to warm up and the days are going to start to warm up as well. It's been pretty miserable. You'll get one or two good days, and then we'll get three or four days where it's, you know, 20, 25 degrees. But what's been the killer is the wind. You know, if a person doesn't have to go out, they just haven't had a whole lot of desire to go out when the wind's blowing 25 miles an hour. But... It looks like after the middle of next week, the weather's gonna start to warm up. And, you know, whenever these fish get going, uh, you know, they're gonna turn on in a hurry. I think things are gonna happen pretty fast because it's, it's been really slow the last, you know, six weeks or so. There's been some fish being caught on an Alabama rig, but no matter who you talk to and what they're doing, there's no consistency to the bite. One day you'll catch them, one day, you, you know, one day you can't get a bite. And, you know, literally, you can fish four or five hours sometimes without a bite. It's, and that's kind of normal for when a water temperature is as cold as it is. Uh, but, you know, so, as soon as that water starts to warm up, you know, a lot of them fish that have been out there deep all winter long seem like they've disappeared, which is good because they're starting to work their way back to the areas, you know, where they're going to spawn, out in front of the spawning pockets and, They've moved out of that deep water, mainly, I think, because the bait has. Uh, there's not as much bait out there in 50, 60, 70 foot of water as it was a month ago. Most of the bait I'm seeing is in the creeks or by the creek mouths, but the bait's not that deep, you know, 10 to 15 foot, which should be great for a jerk bait. I think it's just a matter of time, uh, you know, then fish start moving up there where the, where the bait are, is. And I think what's happening is there's a few fish starting to move up and that's the few that are, that are being caught. You know, as that water gets a little warmer, there'll be more fish moving up. And another thing that's gonna come into play quite a bit is a Ned rig uh, and a jig on the bottom as well. Like I say, this little ultimate Ned jig head, I've been throwing a little craw or a Z-Man makes one as well. It's about a three and a half inch that, that works real good. And even the little swim bait, I hadn't been catching those fish in them gravel pockets suspended. I've been actually letting this thing go to the bottom and this kind of call, you know, we call it scratching the bottom, just keeping the bait just a foot or two off bottom and working it real slow. And a lot of the bites are pretty hard to feel, it just gets heavy. You know, I've had, I've had one or two that have actually knocked it and the same with the jerk bait. A lot of the jerk bait bites, uh, you don't even know the fish is there till you go to twitch it and it's a little bit of weight or when the bait's setting dead still, you'll see a little tick in your line. But, you know, it's gonna get better and the weather's gonna get a lot warmer so it won't be so miserable out there fishing. So, till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.